Good morning. This is Mission Control Houston. We are live here in the International Space Station Flight Control Room awaiting the departure of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft for the Northrop Grumman CRS-18 mission. Earlier today, teams here on the ground commanded the unbolt of Cygnus from the Unity mod module's Earth-facing port and then maneuvered it to the release position. Right now, you are seeing a live view of this Right now you are seeing a live view of Mission Control Houston. Um, here on the ground we have Flight Director Chloe Marin leading the team in the International Space Station Flight Control Room under the call sign Lion Flight. Throughout today's operations we will also hear from Capsule Communicator or CAPCOM Leslie Ringo speaking to the crew aboard the space station. The CAPCOM serves as the voice link between teams on the ground and the station crew. Currently aboard the International Space Station is United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi, who will be monitoring Cygnus's systems during its departure from the space station's cupola. In addition to Al Niyadi, the space station is currently home to NASA astronauts Frank Rubio, Woody Hoberg, and Steve Bowen, as well as Roscosmos cosmonauts Dmitry Patelin, Sergei Prokopyov, and Andrei Fedeyev. Together, they make up the Expedition 69 crew. Right now you're seeing a live view of the Cygnus cargo spacecraft in the grasp of the space station's robotic arm as the station orbits about 250 miles above Earth off the coast of Mexico on the Pacific side. The planned release for Cygnus is about 16 minutes from now at 6.20 a.m. Central Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time. The release op window opens at 6.13 a.m. Central Time. And once this release sequence has begun, um, we will see the robotic arm uh, extend away from Cygnus. and Station Houston N2 for Sultan and Cygnus. Go right up to. Sultan, after you have completed reviews of steps two through six, you are go for Cygnus configuration checks. You can perform step two in 1.602, Cygnus release and departure monitoring. Copy step two of 1.602, of the Cygnus release and departure monitoring. Copy. You just heard uh, Capcom Leslie Ringo uh, communicating with United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi aboard the space station as he begins his tasks for monitoring Cygnus's release. Following the release of Cygnus at 6.20 a.m. Central Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 
the vehicle will cross the keep out sphere at approximately 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, and then cross the approach ellipsoid around 6.45 a.m. Central Time, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time. The keep out sphere and approach ellipsoid are both invisible lines around the space station monitored by the flight controllers on the ground. After the vehicle crosses the approach ellipsoid, joint operations will end and will wrap up coverage and the responsibility for the vehicle is then handed back to the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia. Following a deorbit burn this evening, Cygnus will begin a planned destructive reentry in which the spacecraft, which is filled with trash packed by the station crew, will safely burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. From this view, you can see Cygnus in the grasp of the station's robotic arm. You can also see that one of Cygnus's solar arrays is not fully deployed. This solar array did not deploy following Cygnus's launch last fall. However, the solar array issue didn't impact capture and berthing for Cygnus, and it will not impact release and departure later this morning. Cygnus is a cargo spacecraft used by the Northrop Grumman team to perform International Space Station resupply flights under the second commercial resupply services contract. Northrop Grumman names each Cygnus spacecraft in honor of an individual who has made great contributions to human spaceflight. The Cygnus NG-18 spacecraft was named the SS Sally Ride after former NASA astronaut Sally Ride. Ride made history as the first female capsule communicator and as the first American woman to fly in space. She traveled aboard the second flight of the Space Shuttle Challenger in 1983. She also served as a mission spe specialist on STS-41G and was considered a leader in the NASA community after retiring. Ride was dedicated to inspiring girls and young women to pursue careers in science, math, and technology. Right now you're seeing a view of the Northrop Grumman uh, control room in Dulles, Virginia, where they are currently pulling the Northrop Grumman flight controllers for release and departure. The Northrop Grumman mission director today is Teresa Spinelli, and she is monitoring the teams and controllers in the Cygnus flight control room in Dulles, Virginia. And Station Houston and two for Sultan, um, we're looking for confirmation if the sickness configuration checks are complete and if you are ready for release and departure. I 
finish the session on two uh, affirmative. Uh, we see good uh, verifications on the modes and all other icons. And the uh, sickness congregation check complete, ready for uh, release and departure. Okay, copy. The flight control team here in Houston just pulled go for the release and departure of Cygnus and the crew aboard station confirmed they are ready for release as well. We are just under nine minutes away from the scheduled Cygnus NG-18 release at 6.20 a.m. Central Time, 7.20 a.m. Eastern Time. The NG-18 Cygnus spacecraft launched aboard an Antares rocket at 4.32 a.m. Central Time, 5.32 a.m. Eastern Time on November 7, 2022 from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia. During Cygnus's trip to the station, one of the solar arrays did not deploy. However, the solar, solar array did issue didn't impact capture and birthing for Cygnus and the cargo spacecraft successfully birthed to the International Space Station two days later on November 9th, 2022. During Cygnus's arrival to the station, NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Cassida captured Cygnus with the station's robotic arm. Following the capture, the spacecraft was installed on the Unity module's Earth-facing port. On its journey to the Oil Reading Laboratory, the SS Sally Ride carried approximately 8,265 pounds of supplies, equipment, and experiments for astronauts aboard the station, including critical materials to directly support dozens of more than 250 science and research investigations that occurred during Expedition 68. The release window for Cygnus just opened at 6.13 a.m. Central Time with a planned release at 6.20 a.m. Central Time just under six and a half minutes from now. Station Houston unto for no exercise constraints.
We are now in a brief but expected handover period between satellites and we'll be getting signal back shortly from the space station. Station Houston N2 for no exercise constraint. Hey, Leslie, with you on two. Yeah, uh, we just wanted to make sure everyone was aware that we're with the Cygnus release and back off about to start, we're in that small sliver of no exercise. Okay, thanks for the heads up. We copy no exercise. And Station Houston N2 for Sultan and Cygnus. Go ahead on two. We are go for Cygnus departure on time. Perform steps three and four and one decimal six zero two Cygnus release and departure monitoring. All right, take some copy. Uh, you guys are ready and we're going for step three and four of Cygnus release uh, departure and monitoring. Good be back. Huntsville Station on 2 for Cap is orb, step 2.7. With you on 2. Hey Scott, while I still have you on S band, wondering if you can get a value for me in step 2.7 from the team. We'll have to get you on the other side. We are now about one and a half minutes away from the planned release and departure of Cygnus. Station Houston N2 for Cygnus, ISS thrusters are inhibited and ground M1 is go for release on time. You copy, thrusters are inhibited and we are released on time. Proceeding with release.
teams here on the ground are beginning the release sig sequence for Cygnus on time at 6.28 a.m. Central Time. Release commanded. Staging copies. The air is open. Begin monitoring for drift out. And we are copy. The snares are open, extending the carriage of the latching end effector of the robotic arm to release the Cygnus vehicle. We have release confirmed at 6.22 a.m. Central Time, 7.22 a.m. Eastern Time, with the space station traveling southwest of Ireland. From this view... Uh, station pin has exited the lead, go for back away. Copy. Proceeding with back away. Station copies. From this view, we are beginning to see separation of the vehicle from the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm. Back away in progress. We copy. And the robotic arm is now beginning to back away from sickness. And he's a station on two assignments uh, to vehicle clearance. It's approximately 1.5 meters. Copy 1.5. Coming up in a few minutes, we will be standing by for the departure burn of the Cygnus to begin moving further away from station. The burn will last for about three minutes. Uh, Houston Station on two, uh, we're seeing uh, approximately 4.5 meters uh, Saramis away from Cygnus. And Houston copies. You can hear United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi providing ground controllers with updates, letting them know that the space station's robotic arm was about four and a half meters away from Cygnus.
Back away complete. Okay, uh, station copies, back away complete, and proceeding with uh, departure, departure command issuing. Copy and following along. The robotic arm has finished backing away from Cygnus, and we are standing by for the departure burn. Station on two, depart, command executed. Copy. And for Satan, the Cygnus departure burn is in progress. Please monitor departure burn per step five in 1.602. Right, copy Station 5, Cygnus departure burn. The departure burn is underway, and it will last for about three minutes to begin moving the spacecraft further away from the space station. The departure burn is still underway as the spacecraft and space station travel over northern Libya. Shortly after the departure burn completes, uh, Cygnus will cross the keep out sphere, which is an invisible line around the space station monitored by flight controllers. The keep out sphere is a 200 meter sphere centered on the space station. Thank you, session on two. Step six is complete. The Tigo and Vigo are no longer visible. Copy step six complete. Thank you, Satan. The departure burn is complete.
And Sultan, with your last call with step six being complete, that means you are um, now out of one decimal six zero two six release and departure monitoring. Right, copy one decimal six zero two is complete and we're out of this procedure. Thanks. And please share with all crew members that the no exercise constraint is no longer in place. All right, station copies and we'll share that. Thanks. Cygnus has crossed the keep out sphere. The next uh, milestone will be crossing the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid is another imaginary shape. This time it's a three dimensional ellipsoid measuring four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers in the same family as the keep out sphere. After the vehicle crosses the approach ellipsoid, joint operations will end and will wrap up coverage and responsibility for the vehicle is handed back to the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia. Following a deorbit engine firing later this evening, Cygnus will begin a planned destructive re-entry in which the spacecraft will safely burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. And station Houston N2 for Cygnus. Cygnus has exited the 200 meter keep out sphere. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft uh, safely separated from the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm and released from the space station approximately 13 minutes ago at 6.22 a.m. Central Time, 7.22 a.m. Eastern Time. It then uh, completed a successful departure burn that lasted approximately three minutes and crossed the keep out sphere. We are now standing by waiting for it to cross the approach ellipsoid. The NG-18 Cygnus spacecraft uh, launched to the space station on November 7th, 2022 from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia, and then uh, was captured and berthed to the space, er, space station on November 9th, 2022. During its journey to the orbiting laboratory, the spacecraft carried approximately 8,200 pounds of supply, supplies, equipment, and experiments for astronauts aboard the station. In addition to delivering these supplies and investigations, Cygnus also demonstrated 
uh, its re reboost capability on March 30th when it fired its engines for over 15 minutes to boost the station's orbit, continuing the certification process for using the Cygnus spacecraft as an additional reboost capability. The NG-17 Cygnus cargo spacecraft previously demonstrated this reboost capability last summer. Station Huntsville on space to ground two for Woody and Capazor.
Station Houston N2 for Sultan and a Cupola Robotic Workstation question. Go ahead and two. Hey, Sultan. Um, our telemetry is showing that the Cupola DCP um, unpowered. Um, so we just wanted to check if that was crew action or if maybe it had done it it spontaneously by itself. Actually, this is uh, me. I was uh, following procedure of disconnecting the PCS, and I went to that uh, URP that the Cobrick to the uh, PCS is connected, and I was uh, following the instruction to power off that uh, URP. And, uh, yeah, I've I think this is also connected to the uh, mini workstation, so, uh, sorry, to the robotic workstation, and I heard it um, coming off like the fans were off, so it is, it is me. Copy and checking. Okay, back with you and to Sultan. So we copy that you're now working the PCS relocate. Um, so you're going to continue with that. And at the end of this procedure, we want to make sure that you repower up that UOP, please. All right, uh, copy, and uh, we'll let you know when it's up again. Much appreciate. Thank you. You can see a view of the International Space Station Flight Control Room here in Houston, Texas, uh, where capsule communicator Leslie Ringo is continuing to communicate with the crew aboard the space station. And then next to her is the flight director, Chloe Marion. We are standing by for confirmation of crossing the approach ellipsoid, which is the final milestone for the Cygnus release and departure before joint operations end and responsibility of the vehicle is handed back to the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia. Session. session on two, so the PCS is uh, disconnected now, and uh, do you want that uh, URP to be uh, powered on again? Checking.
And Sultan, you are go to repower the cupola UOP. Copy and work. And here's sensation on two, uh, UOP is powered up again, and the uh, robotic workstation is running. Copy all, thank you. I'm sorry for that confusion. Um, just appeared uh, like a flexible activity on my timeline. That's why I went and uh, disconnected the PCS. Actually, no worries, Sultan. You actually found um, a fix that we need to implement, so it was a good find. All right, thank you. On the lower right-hand corner of your screen, you can see the console position for VVO, which is the visiting vehicle officer. The VVO today is Thomas Castleberry, who serves as the guidance and navigation liaison between the space station and visiting vehicles such as Cygnus. Castleberry is also in communication with the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia. And station Houston N2 for timeline specifically for your VOK, so activity. Um, so, Tan, earlier when we were working the um, vegetable depress cleanups, um, we had some missing seal issues, and so we think we have some hardware in the Node 1 Nader VOK um, kit that we're going to need, and so we would like for you to defer that activity at this time for, for restowing it, um, and then work any other flexible activities instead on your timeline. No problem, we'll defer that and uh, yeah, I'll wait for uh, your call when it's ready. Thanks. Copy. Station Houston N2 for Cygnus status. Cygnus has exited the approach ellipsoid. Station copies, thanks. The Cygnus spacecraft has officially crossed the approach ellipsoid and joint operations between the International Space Station Flight Control Team here in Houston and the Northrop Grumman Flight Control Team in Dulles, Virginia have concluded. 
Flight Director Chloe Marion just gave us some congratulatory words to the mission, Cygnus Mission Director in uh, Dulles, Virginia. Houston, station on two for Cygnus timeline. Go ahead on two. Hey, sorry if we missed this, but just curious if you might have times, estimated times for deorbit burn and reentry. Copy and checking. And station Houston N2 for Cygnus timeline. Go ahead. Okay, for T orbit burn, we are tracking um, GMT day 112. Um, time is 022904. And then atmospheric entry, um, we're tracking is going to be day 112, um, 030444. Um, unfortunately, crew is not going to be able to see that. Okay, copy. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So 112, uh, 022904, and then 030444. Thanks so much. And you're most welcome. The Cygnus cargo spacecraft for the Northrop Grumman CRS-18 mission, which was named the SS Sally Ride, safely departed the International Space Station earlier this morning at 6.22 a.m. Central Time, 7.22 a.m. Eastern Time. The cargo spacecraft recently crossed the approach ellipsoid in joint operations between the NASA mission control teams here in Houston and the Northrop Grumman flight control team in Dulles, Virginia concluded. The SS Sally Ride spent more than five months birth to the space station after delivering over 8,200 pounds of supplies, scientific investigations, commercial products, hardware, and other cargo, cargo to the space station for NASA. Following a deorbit burn later this evening, Cygnus will begin a planned destructive re-entry in which the spacecraft filled with trash packed by the station crew will safely burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Coming up on Monday, April 24th, we will have a... U.S. Spacewalk 86 preview briefing on NASA TV at 1 p.m. Central Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for joining us this morning as we followed the release and departure of the SS Sally Ride. This is Mission Control Houston.